So who listens to podcasts? Anybody? Who doesn't know what a podcast is? Anyone? Well, you're about to find out regardless. So either way, a podcast is an audio or video file that a user can download or stream from the internet. And by the way, Doug, I don't want any of this online because I don't put anything online. So um, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, everything's online. Uh, they can be well produced, such as ones you may have heard of. Uh, I'm from the United States. So, uh, uh, this American Life and Serial got are super popular in the United States. Um, and they can be uh, something as well produced as that or something that you recorded in your mom's basement or your own basement for that matter. And, uh, but most fall somewhere in the middle with uh, varying quality controls and such. Um, although I personally don't think shows from, say, NPR or even BBC, if they put out podcasts or anybody that's well produced, that takes their audio and, and cuts it and puts it on iTunes or something else and calls it a podcast, to me, that's not really a podcast. That's uh, just media that's been put in the same format, but it's not a podcast. Um, but that's a debate for, for another presentation, um, podcast or conference. So the CRM news podcast was the first podcast I started. Uh, I was laid off from my job, so what do you do? You start a podcast. Um, and it was also about the same time, uh, I guess about a year later, I started my own company too. So, uh, But I was working for a CRM company in Reno, um, had some extra time, so I decided to fill it with a podcast. And I've been listening to other podcasts and trying to find archaeology podcasts in general. Uh, the Stone Pages News Podcast was one of the ones I listened to a lot. And uh, he's right back there. <laughs> and um, But other otherwise, there wasn't really anything online that was consistently just about archaeology. There was that one, and there was the, uh, the, uh, the Archaeology News Weekly um, by Rick Pettigrew. And that those were about the only two things that were up consistently. There was some stuff that was up before, and, and it died, and you could still find it, but it wasn't. they weren't producing anything anymore. And I wanted something focused on cultural resource management or contract archaeology in the United States, specifically because that's where I work. So I thought I would set up a couple of Google searches, and I was finding these news articles, and I was reading them, and it was incredibly boring. Uh, I it got some downloads, but I, I'm really surprised it got any because it was horrible. So what I really wanted was something else, um, something else entirely, where it's a discussion format. Like the discussions I was having at work and with my colleagues when we're in the in the field truck, uh, the current project I'm on, I've got a crew down in California, and we have about an hour and a half drive from our lodging to our survey area one way every single day. And there's no way to get around that because it's on a top secret military installation, so we can't stay there. They won't let us camp in a missile bombing range for some reason. And um, so... We have all these great discussions on the way in and the way out. We have some horrible discussions too, but everybody who's been in a field truck knows that. So we have all these great discussions, and that's the kind of podcast I wanted. So I found some people online. Doug is one of them. And uh, you know, we just decided to start this podcast where we, we would have a topic and we would all talk about it from our own perspectives and our own experience. And there's up to about five or six people that are um, roving co-hosts on the Sierra Archaeology podcast now, and I get different ones on each time. And we all have such different experience levels that it, it really brings a lot to the table. And, and we can we even contradict each other a lot of times, and, and which just shows you that there isn't any one opinion that's valid in, in archaeology. It's always, you know, we, we don't all just agree with each other. We all disagree with each other a lot. <laughs> and, and, and that shows the, the variety that's out there. Um, so... I ended up, like I said, with this core group of about five people. Um, we put together the show uh, every two weeks. It's been going out for two and a half years. We're up to, I think, uh, this morning, episode 67 went out. And we get about three to 4,000 downloads per month, which is, which is pretty good. Um, we cover everything from grad school topics to field clothing to the sheenus. And if you don't know what the sheenus is, check out episode 20 of the CRM Archaeology Podcast. Don't Google that, I swear to God. Um, so if you got one podcast, why not make about seven or eight more uh, if you've got a little extra time on your hands, which don't we all? So I realized I had a few extra minutes to spare last summer, so I started tossing around the idea of doing a podcast network because, quite frankly, there was a lot of other stuff I wanted to talk about that just didn't fit in the CRM Archaeology podcast. I started cramming it in anyway because I had nowhere else to put it. And I put out an idea, uh, the idea on Twitter and on my blog, and uh, Tristan actually responded to that. And I said that I was looking for hosts and editors, and when Tristan responded, I was like, 
my God, yes. E even if you don't do anything except are a sounding board for ideas. I mean, I need somebody to constantly be there and, and be a part of this whole thing and say, you know, how are we gonna how are we gonna get this done and bring out new shows? And Tristan had a show called the Anarchaeologist uh, Podcast, and that was something that he had been doing for a little while, and and he brought it to the APN. We've got um, uh, a couple more shows in, but. Anyway, we started working to launch the network and we started getting a logo together and, and a website and all this stuff. And we ended up with the Archaeology Podcast Network going live on December 1st, 2014, so uh, just last year. And we had five shows to start, the CRM Archaeology Podcast, Tristan's An Archaeologist Podcast, the Struggling Archaeologist Guide to Getting Dirty, hosted by Jenny McNiven. Um, hers has kind of fallen off a little bit because she's pregnant and having a child and I guess has other priorities. And... Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and the Archeo Tech podcast was started brand new at that point, hosted by uh, Doug Rocks McQueen and uh, Russell Allen Willems. And then I started a new podcast as well called Profiles in CRM, which is a weekly podcast um, where we talk to, I talk to CRM archeologists in the United States. I ask them eight questions and it's a, it's a good resource, I think, to look back and say, because I ask them the same eight questions, all of them. The first four establish their experience level and, and sort of where they're at and where they've worked. And then the last four questions talk about, you know, what they would do to make CRM archeology span better, advice they would give to undergrads, things like that. And it's, it's interesting to hear, again, the different perspectives from people with different experience levels. And I think that's, you know, talking about later, talking about what archaeology can do for uh, public outreach and education and things like that, that's one of the things I've had people write in um, almost weekly uh, from, an under, from undergrads and graduate students that say, you know, I found the, CRM, the Profiles in CRM podcast and it's really given me a good perspective on the field from people that have been in for six months and people who have been doing this for 20 years and, and see the different answers that they give. Um, so we started with a combined... Uh, Download total, like I said, of over 4,000 downloads a month. Um, we've since added the Archaeological Fantasies podcast, hosted by Sarah Head, who is a host, of, a co-host of the CRM Archaeology podcast, and Dr. Ken Fader, um, who is uh, a well-known sort of pseudo-archaeology um, skeptic. He's written a number of books. He's at the University of Connecticut, uh, talking about all kinds of stuff, debunking all sorts of things in archaeology. So uh, this, the Archaeological Fantasies podcast has been great for public outreach and education because they started in January and instantly rocketed to um, to equal the Sierra Archaeology podcast, which has been out for two and a half years. Uh, so that was pretty good. And if they haven't surpassed it yet, they're going to quickly because that is such a uh, a wider audience. Um, people will Google Atlantis, and now their episode on Atlantis shows up, or they'll Google something crazy on the History Channel, and hopefully their podcast shows up, and they can hear uh, they'll they'll have interviews too. So hopefully they can hear the um, the real archaeologists and the real scientists behind whatever's being talked about and not just the edited version that goes on History Channel or Discovery Channel or something like that. We also have the Archaeology and Ale podcast, which is uh, a series of lectures that the um, University of Sheffield puts out. They have a lecture series at the, the Red Deer Pub, I believe it is, in Sheffield, and it's monthly. They kind of took a little break over the summer after they did this festival, but they're starting it back up shortly. And we basically just rebroadcast their audio that they record uh, during that uh, event which we're interested in doing for anybody who does sort of a event. Just record it, and we'll throw it up on the podcast. It's totally free. Um, so anyway, I don't know if I said it already, but we're getting about seven to 8,000 downloads a month across the network now, as it is, and that's, that's phenomenal. That's, that's the people that are downloading the podcast, and there's inevitably somebody that's also listening next to the person that's listening to it sometimes and, and things like that. So we're getting a lot of, we're getting a lot of play on that. Um, and... You know, that's that's pretty much the end of my talk, but what I wanted to do is ask a little bit more or talk a little bit more about, um, you know, what this is doing for the public, um, what this is doing for anyone else, uh, and, and take some questions also. But one thing I wanted to mention as well, uh, one of the guys on my crew right now, he's been doing CRM archaeology for about 10 years, and he told me something that I've still been thinking about because uh, I hadn't really thought about this. You know, you, you do these podcasts and you do these things, and all this stuff online like we've heard about earlier, but sometimes you feel like you're doing it in a vacuum, especially any bloggers out there. You, you feel like sometimes you just, like nobody's reading this, like why am I doing this? Nobody's getting it. Um, I mean, I get a few emails, but like nobody comments because typically they're listening to it in the lab or in the field or in a truck and they just don't have access to something like that and they don't think about it when they go home. I'm guilty of that too. And uh, But he said that 
he feels, and this friend of mine, he says, you know, he's worked all over the country, and for the last two and a half years, he knew of me when he when I hired him. I didn't know him. He knew of me from the podcast, and he said he, he thinks that of all the Sierra archaeologists in the United States, nearly all of them have either heard or heard of the Sierra Archaeology podcast, which is pretty phenomenal. Which means the the words getting out there, you know, whether or not, you know, if it was just me pontificating about archaeology, then that'd be one thing. But it's it's three to five of us typically. And with all of our opinions and viewpoints, somebody's going to get something out of it. Somebody's going to agree with something or disagree with something. But the point is, and the point of sort of this whole session is that it starts a conversation. It's conversations that people aren't necessarily having, or at least they might be having, but they're not going in a, how should we say, how should we say beneficial direction. So um, we sort of kick it off and, and send it in a direction that gets things done. Because one thing, one thing that I've always hated is, is people that just complain about stuff without suggesting any possible solutions to what they're complaining about. It's like, okay, we've identified the problem. Let's move on and figure out how do we fix it. And there's a lot of problems in, in contract archaeology and, and just living and being a, 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 an on-the-road field archaeologist. So, And that's what we talk about. But we're starting some more podcasts. Um, we've got a lot more uh, in development, but uh, it takes... It takes editing. It takes some doing. Right now, we're doing this totally free. We have zero funding, so we're doing all the editing and and posting, and everything's just being paid for by um, well by me really. And it was really just the hosting and stuff like that. But it's the editing time and stuff like that. So as we ramp it up and we get more downloads, we'll be able to get other bigger sponsors and maybe get this thing uh, funded a little bit. Then you'll hear some you'll hear some ads, unfortunately, but that's the way it goes. So uh, I wanted to open it up to any questions. Anybody has any questions about? podcasting or any experiences or anything like that they've had that they anything they learned or would like to hear on a podcast. <laughs>